Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. Uh, today we're taking on, I was about to say the last of the interludes, but there's clearly something between 5 and 1 there, although it's uh, not easy to read. Uh, but okay, maybe it may be the penultimate interlude here. Un Pueblo de Nada, which is uh, Spanish for a Pueblo, or or not, of, de, of, de, of, of it's one Pueblo, that's nothing. That's what that means. Pueblo is a town or village, I think. It's also the name of a native people in, like, the southwestern U.S. It's a, uh, I don't know. Listen, it's a complicated thing is what it is. I'm not late, am I? Uh, who, who is this person? Uh, late for... Oh, sorry, I'm Maya. Right, the traveling artist. Well, welcome. I'm Emily. I, uh, work here. Great. Rita says you're the producer? Oh, did she? <laughs> I, I guess so. I do a little bit of everything. Yeah, I know the feeling. You weren't around earlier at the lunch thing? No, I, I don't live in town. I just come in to work on the station. Really? That's quite a hike, isn't it? Well, I know some shortcuts. Oh, okay. She seems unconvinced by that answer. Also, an artifact of the way I'm playing it, I guess. I'm starting to lose track of characters. We definitely have known... an Emily. Do we know a Maya? And everybody looks kind of the same, you know? There's a lot of... The, there's a lot of white people who haven't got faces, so I'm, I'm starting to lose control of, uh, of who's who here. Uh, I wonder what her deal is. She seems suspicious. <laughs> so, what's your deal? That's interesting. This is the first time that we've not we've had indirect control over a character's dialogue like this, right? I could have phrased that differently. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm an artist. I work with Earth, kind of an Earth sculptor. I make stuff that looks a lot like the mounds you have here in town. Oh, you know what? That's another Pueblo. The word Pueblo uh, refers to a style of building that is used by the native people that are called the Pueblo, even though Pueblo is a Spanish word. They probably have another name. I, I should maybe have done some research. <laughs> oh, the burial mounds. Yeah, that's why I came down here, to see them up close and make some sketches. Uh, they're, uh, amazing, right? They make me uncomfortable, to be honest. It seems kind of weird to build a town in a graveyard. Sure, and every town has a graveyard, but usually the town comes first. Okay, I'll, I'll check if Rita's ready. You can just hang out back here somewhere. We'll let you know when it's time to come on set. Great, thanks for having me. Yeah, you too. I mean, um, uh, but you know what I mean. Boy, been there. Ugh, why am I so awkward with visitors here? And also, you know, with just human beings in general. I'm just used to seeing the same 12 people day in and day out, I guess. At least the floor is staying dry. My left boot has a hole. Okay, wait, so I can... there's a... Huh. This is a different style of interaction than we're used to. Looks like the ceiling is holding up okay. Just the usual leaks. Looks like I just made it before the sky broke open. So we don't want to go back outside. Is this... Okay, that's Ben and Bob. Like, this is a great example of what I'm talking about. I thought this was Conway. Uh, ben, Bob, and Emily. Yep, okay. I, I remember who Emily is now. Uh, we, feel that, we feel that Bob is essentially a guy, although sometimes he's slow. He's a slow guy. Over here, Ben is some kind of horrible bear monster to us. That's how we feel about Ben. So is this just the roof thing? Ceiling's holding up okay. Yeah, this is a very different, very different style of interaction. Miss you, cross eye. Hold on, let's. Oh, that's weird. There were tapes down here, but I, I figured we would interact with this first. So when I, 
when I click, it just like signals that I have indeed seen that bit of text and then prevents it from showing up anymore. I had the thought, time to move on to other thoughts. Boy, I sure hope the neighbors are okay. It does sound like it is raining cats and or dogs outside. So we know... Oh, we found that radio in the woods a week or two ago. Let's... No, I can't. I can't interact directly with the symbols. If I interact with different directions of this thought, is it... I cleaned the circuits with rubbing alcohol and left it in the sun. So we're just like, we're adding new context to the thought as we continue to think about it? What is this over here? It seemed like it was working okay again. Why are they taking it apart? And yeah, it didn't, it didn't seem like where I was in the circle was having any effect on the thoughts at all. If it gets any worse, we might be stuck in town tonight. Yeah, this is weird. All right, Cyrano's here to help with the weather report. That should be cool. Elmo gets a lot more into it when he has some noise to vibe on. Their uh, their understanding of the weather might be a little similar to the Night Vale understanding of the weather. It seems like. Here we have our video data bank. It used to be on the other side of the room, and the couch was in this corner. Oh, maybe that's why I was thinking about the tapes when I was looking at the uh, the poster over there. I remember the data bank being in that place. We moved it here, where the ceiling is the least le leaky. It's further from the windows, too, so sunlight doesn't bleach the labels. So much of archiving is just playing hide-and-seek with weather. But that's a big thought. I sure do love this computer or the bird. Slow-mo crow, keeping an eye on the control board. No, of course it's the bird. Who wouldn't love a bird? Keep up the good work, Mo. Actually, most birds are pretty mean-spirited critters, but I would like to have a friendly crow. That would be neat. Oh, James left a patch wired up on the image processor. Nice. Maybe there will be time to play with it after the show. Yeah, maybe. I'm going to pretend that I understand what's happening over here. Well, I guess it's time to start the show. Okay, ready when you are. How does it look outside? Gross. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. Saturn is in retrograde. What does that even mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. You think it'll let up? I guess we'll see what Elmo says. Oh, my poor tomatoes. Okay, in three, two... Hi, it's Rita. This is your evening broadcast, 8192. Wow, it's really raining out there. Damn, I can hear it from here. We have a few leaks. Put some pots and bowls underneath them. Thanks, Ron, for lending us your extra pots and bowls. I hope you had a good day despite the weather. Although, it was really nice earlier, right? I had a good day today. I met a new friend, and she's going to join us in about a minute or so. Maybe you saw her earlier, around lunch. Or, if you didn't meet her, then you'll meet her in a minute. This is a weird TV broadcast. Or, if you met her already, but you still want to hang out, I'm sure there's plenty that we can talk about. Wow, so this is 8192. Is that right, Emily? Is that... I'm guessing she's talking... Like, this is the episode number. This is the 8192nd episode. But I'm going to think what is she talking about in the hopes that Emily will fill in that information for us. To camera. That's a lot of broadcasts. I came in around the fives, so I've only been around for half of them. Okay, that seems like a pretty solid confirmation. And back then, in the fives, let's see, we had... Well, I did Night Noise, and we had The Swap Show, and The Bird Show, and people just coming in and dropping off tapes all the time, and... And now, well, now it's just the evening broadcast. But it's not like... I, I'm not saying we're in decline or anything like that. I love the evening broadcast. I think it was the first show we had on here. Well, it was the first show not produced by the power company. Uh, it was the first community show, yeah. That's weird, because I didn't say this out loud, right? These are just thoughts? Uh... Those empty humming shots of trees and glowing-eyed animals. Yeah, before that, it was just security footage from the woods. Oh, that's very creepy. Yeah. 
So it's the spine of the station. Also, I'm not even using the right voices for people. Or maybe it's the heart. Or is it the skin? What part of the WEVP body do you think this is? And why don't you come on by and tell us about it? We're going to be here for another 30 minutes or so. Or, if you don't want to brave the storm, you can always give us a call. Same number as always. That's... Okay, no, that is not the number we dialed earlier. I wonder if we could go back to the other, um... The other interlude and dial that. We might do... Where's my pen? Uh, that's right, I broke my pen. Well, alright, whatever. We'll, I'll, I'll try to remember to come back. Okay, so we're going to start with a tape. This is an old one. It's one of mine, but maybe you haven't seen it. Or, if you've seen it, it's been a while, so maybe you've forgotten. Oh, shit. What? She asked me to queue up her tape. Uh, un pueblo de nada. Well, well, where is it? I don't know. It's probably still shelved. I'll find it. Okay, I'm gonna need to find it quickly, I assume. Listen, she can, she can vamp in her weird, breathy, empty voice that I've given her for some reason. Okay, the tape should be in here somewhere. Hopefully, the sun has not bleached the label off of it. Emily scans the shelf of videotapes. Uh... Oh, what's this? Emily pulls out an unlabeled tape. To herself, absently. Hmm, impossible to say. Not much tape in there, though. Old bumpers, maybe. Louder, for others' benefit. Hey, someone should come in here and label all these. We should put this all in chronological order. Although, I guess it's hard to remember sometimes the order of things. And some of these tapes were made at the same time, or, or we started one video and then started another in the middle and then came back later, and... Um, time is out of joint. It's like sweeping a beach. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh... What do I think happened to it? Maybe it just fell behind the shelf? She said that nobody had seen it in a while, so it's probably not been a thing people are into. They were paying a lot of attention to. Emily pulls a grimy tape case from behind the shelf. Oh, gross. It's damp. She opens the case. It's empty. Okay. Well, maybe somebody was interested in it. I mean, Ron said he'd start filing the old stuff by language, so... Favorite tires? That's English. Disagreeable birds? Also English. The zone? That's in Japanese. Fiesta Salvaje? Okay, getting warmer. Ah, un pueblo de nada. There we go. What would you all do without me? I'll tell you what, vamp awkwardly on the air for hours and hours at a time. Let's cue this tape up. Here you go, Mo. Hold off on playing this until Rita's done setting it up. Thanks, babe. Apparently we have a very close relationship with this crow. I mean, we know she loves it very much. That was a lot of hearts. Nobody draws that many hearts for a casual relationship. Alright. Some people that lived here a long time ago, before the company town, before the airstrip, like, over a hundred years ago. Okay, so I hope you enjoy it. Ready, Emily? Yes, this time we are ready. I, I totally did the thing. The bird is ready to do my job for me. Does he, does he do it? I wonder what Maya thinks of the dog. Oh, this is cool. Have you seen it before? Uh, I should say something nice. I should try to smooth over the uncomfortableness of the earlier interaction, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's something else. You don't sound convinced. <laughs> it's not a bad way to learn about history, though. Yeah, she did a lot of research for this tape. The people of nothing. We still have a few of those worn-out notebooks they left. I guess that guy from the university took the rest. What did he say he was working on? Oh, right. The Archive of Utopian Thought. Some big preservation project, I guess. So now the people of nothing are on a shelf somewhere. And here, on this tape. I mean, it is history, right? Or is it just a story? You know, it seems kind of sad now. I guess it's kind of a memorial. Those are always sad. A memorial to the people who used to live here. Or is there even a difference? That's a big question there, Maya. Hello. Now the tape is just here on a shelf. Every once in a while we dust it off and it shuffles around the airwaves again like an old dog. S sorry, did I say something wrong? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I just have some weird shit going on in my head tonight, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure, it's okay. Sorry I spaced out. 
Uh, don't worry about it. You should, um... Oh, oh, should I go sit? Yeah, um, it's almost over. So I know about eight words of Spanish, and I can't understand anything this tape is saying to us. Maybe some of you could, if I wasn't, you know, talking over it constantly. I'm kind of curious if we've gotten any more prompts around the building. I wonder if the crow speaks Spanish. So, where are you staying tonight? Here in town. Oh, good. Yeah, this is a terrible interview. Even before the storm came in, I thought it'd be nice to get some rest before the long hike back to the highway. Ron offered his... loft? What? He said I could sleep in his loft. Oh, honey. He's talking about his barn. Ron, nobody wants to sleep in your barn. Ron shrugs. Well, it's not haunted. But, no, but it is haunted. Bob got some pretty clear voices in there on his tape recorder. He wanted to have a seance, but he couldn't round up enough brave souls to go all the way around the table. The trick with that is you just buy a smaller table. Um, you'll stay at my place. Oh, thanks. You know, with that storm coming, I should probably find somewhere to stay out here tonight. I mean, I guess the loft is free, if I dare. Do you need anything? Actually... Do you have an extra toothbrush? No, it would be nice to sleep under the stars. Um, I think I do, actually. Yeah. Why is this a thing to say on TV? Okay. Oh my god, I've been in the woods, you know? Oh, right. I actually used a twig this morning. I kind of, like, chewed up one end. No stars tonight, though. There's no way a twig would you work as a toothbrush. If you could, like, drag it against that little... Oh. Ah, I wish I hadn't thought about that. Ugh. Oh, I've done that. Really? I'm disappointed. I thought I invented it. Well, even better. You can chew on some pine needles. It really freshens your breath. I mean, it's not perfect. Wow, that's roughing it. You just close your eyes and pretend, I guess. Right, exactly. And even then, it's just not the same as real toothpaste. Do they know that we're rolling? Emily waves to Rita. Hey, remember how you're on TV? Oh, okay. Hi. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed that video. Like I said, that was from, like, uh, it's several years old. I can't remember exactly. Oh, okay. She thought that we, that the video was still playing. That, that makes a lot more sense. Oh, I enjoyed it very much. Oh, thank you, Maya. So what's next? Well, I, I brought in a tape. Oh. Okay, Are you good? Yeah, it's all queued up. I'm gonna check on the boys. I'm gonna just go over here real quick and check on the boys. How are you guys doing destroying this radio? Ben and Bob are seated on the couch, poking at the electronic innards of a radio. So then it won't mute while it scans between stations. Okay, because that's where they live, right? Uh, no. You just, you want that constant static noise. Right, the noise. That's where they live. But they don't live anywhere, dude. They're ghosts. Okay. Why does it matter where you tune the radio? It's like soil in your garden. You need rich soil, right? Mashed up, rotted leaves and stuff. Like, like compost. Oh, hey, um, how's the show? Oh, you know, just a normal night. Good. Always fun to have a guest. Something for the shut-ins. The holdover's from the company town. Like that guy who used to do the titles for the Aunt Connie broadcasts. Why is he still here? An act of penance? Well, that's our little town. Stragglers, weirdos, and ghost hunters. The radio crackles as it scans rapidly across the spectrum. Snippets of voices mixed with colored noise and unfamiliar interference patterns. Oh, did you hear that? That was definitely a voice from beyond the grave. It sounded like, uh... Oh, I clearly heard dogwood in there. Yeah, kinda. It sounded more like 
Frogwood to me. What what the hell is Frogwood? Man, I don't tell the ghosts what to say. Oh, did you hear that, Emily? I honestly I didn't hear anything. You know, best to be on well, should I just humor them? No, best to be honest. I didn't hear a voice at all. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. The ghost voices don't really come out until you play the recording later. And they only exist in recordings, like a copy without an original. A mirror, reflecting something that isn't in the room. Uh, I guess, I guess that's more eerie than weird. This is a fine distinction, though. Like the mounds. I wonder if you, I wonder if Emily actually says something different if you pick weird. The burial mounds here in town? You, you think they're haunted? No, or, or sure, probably. But I meant they're like the reflection. The people who made them lived hundreds of years ago. That whole society is long gone. And now we just have these lingering echoes without any trace of context. Yeah, that is kind of eerie. So, the ghosts speak and we, we can't hear it. But the tape recorder can hear it, is that right? Man, I don't know. Sometimes I think it's more like all the record. Or sometimes I think it's more like the recording itself is a ghost. Like that's what ghosts are—recordings of events that didn't happen. When something keeps leaving new marks even after it's gone, like false memories. Huh. That's interesting. Rolls on the floor are getting full pretty quickly. We assume I can't actually see them, but I hope somebody's planning to empty these. You know, like somebody else. And the town looks really empty in the rain. I wonder if that's true in cities, too, if rain makes it all look empty. I'm trying to remember. What's a big city I've been in when it rained? Oh, oh, Chicago, downpour on Western Avenue. We took shelter in a gas station. Does it just look empty because everyone stays inside? No. No, there's something uncanny about a town in a thunderstorm. It's like a reanimated corpse. Boy, I don't know if I agree with that. I think I get what she's getting at. There's like, I mentioned before, I think, that I like to drive around at night. I like to walk around at night a lot, but I like to drive around at night in, in new places. And there's definitely like a strange feeling to that level of emptiness. Like sometimes you can be in a heavily populated area at 3 a.m. and there's just no sign that anyone else is alive. To be perfectly honest, that feeling is part of why I do it. Something like... There's something comforting about all the civilizations still being there, but, like, but simultaneously eerie about the people not being there. I don't really get along with people all that well in the first place, so maybe I also find that part comforting. Ugh, more leaks. This is not sustainable. We just need a big tarp. We just stretch a big tarp across the top of the building. It's like they're just sitting here already. Huh, James has been working on this circuit diagram for a while now. I do not know how to read a circuit diagram. This is, I am not this kind of engineer. What is being sketched out here? Also, James wants to fight the power, perhaps? Lib? Somebody's, somebody's lib. Somebody's, somebody's liberation. The diagram has been up on the chalkboard for at least a couple of months. So the symbols we're seeing are like her recollections of things that are related, right? Things she thinks of when she thinks of the things that we're looking at. So I guess this is telling us something about James. James is fighting for some kind of liberation. I, think, I mean, I think we can take a guess with the raised fist. It's a schematic for some essential component to the image processor. You know, this is the house where the graphics live. Nobody understands it but James. Now that's the point. He's trying to clean it up and simplify it a bit. He'll publish the simplified diagram and everyone can build an image processor. Meanwhile, it's like hieroglyphics in here. The schematic seems to get more eerie the longer James is away. He understands it, which keeps it tethered in the realm of the human. Otherwise, it might as well be lichen. Oh, that's an interesting thing to say, given the, the lichen computer and everything. What do you reckon is in... I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at this and trying to make any sense of it. Like, it's not all complete gibberish to me. What do you think is in 
the fact that we haven't heard the word eerie at all at any point in the game, and then all of a sudden we hear it twice in quick succession. Do you think it's just th this whole part was written on the same day and the, the writer had the word eerie in their head? That's probably all it is. Buddy, I'm not sure you're doing that right. I don't think that's what that's supposed to... Yeah, okay. Who am I to tell you your job, right? I do so love an oscilloscope. You can plug any signal in here and it shows up on the screen. Sound waves, radio, video signals, tennis for two. Even just a weak electrical signal with no other purchase on the senses. You can in inspect electronic sounds that are usually too low frequency to detect. Sometimes it takes a little tuning. James used this to show me the guest in our wiring here in town. There's a low hum. I mean, barely even a hum, because it's too slow to be audible. A slow, gentle oscillation that offsets every other electrical signal in town. James hasn't been able to figure out what causes the hum, but it's okay. It's too subtle to cause any real problems for us. It's just... there. Huh. I mean, you have a ghost in the wiring, right? Alright, this is Ron's big moment, and apparently it's going to be wild. So, okay, Ron, anything that you want to tell us about that tape? Well, everything on that tape was wild. Really? Everything? Wild stuff indeed. Even the horses. Everything on that tape was wild. Huh. And then Emily is totally off in her own little world. You know, planes used to leave these thick black marks on the runway at our little airstrip. I guess it was from coming in so fast on such a short runway. Or maybe cheap tires. I don't really know. Were the horses wild? I thought those were the horses here. Oh, the neighbors. We call the horses here the neighbors. No, I didn't recognize that one. I don't think there are any wild horses anymore. Wait, Billy? How could that be? Oh, well... They've all been domesticated. Are the neighbors domesticated? Well, we don't own them, no. They're, um, uh, feral? You know, the tracks would bleach out in the sun, but then the next time it rained, they'd appear again as oily afterimages on the runway. Now it's been decades since anyone has landed here, but those marks still come out when it rains. The rain is starting to get a little uh, loud. I'm going to actually turn the game audio down a bit. Um, sound routing in video game recording is a little complicated and then the, the, I have the game audio set higher for me than it is for you guys maybe it wasn't a problem for anybody else but exact uh, sorry mm -hmm. uh, oh right in your documentary you said that the people who used to live here had freed their horses exactly but you can free your pet cat but it won't uh, turn back into a panther right that's a kind of haunting. A kind of ghost, like Ben was saying. The after images. But everything is a ghost around here these days. It's a ghost town with people still living in it against all reason. <laughs> this evening broadcast is a travesty, really. This thing has fallen all, up, all the way apart. I mean, I'd never say that out loud. Everyone works so hard on it. What about the dogs? Uh, yeah, Ron. Was the dog wild? Everything on that tape was wild. But it's a little perverse that this little community news program goes on strong while the community itself is barely hanging on, like a leftover reflection. Well, it didn't look wild to me. Yeah, I guess it's a matter of perspective. I'm not sure I agree, but now it's time for the weather. Thanks again, Ron. We're hanging on long past our expiration date. Well, the weather should be pretty wild. I can hear it for myself right now. You know, yeah, getting pretty intense out there. Do you get storms like this a lot? More and more. Right, of course. And then, of course, there's the actual ghost. Alright, here's Elmo with the weather report. And, lucky us, we also have Cyrano Cole, who stopped by to add some drama, musically. I hear he's going to be at the Rum Colony later tonight if you need a cocktail after the show. 
So, let's go live to Elmo for the for the weather report. Oh, is Elmo ready? I should make sure the camera's pointed in the right direction. Uh, did we have a separate camera for, camera for this? Oh good, standing water on the floor. And a hole in my boot. Also a lot of electrical equipment, which is maybe more of a concern. Cool, my socks are getting wet. I love to have wet socks. At some point she discovered the power of irony. She's never been the same. Looks like the ceiling panels are swelling a little. Is that really happening? Are we about to get drenched? I mean, it doesn't look to... Oh, uh, maybe. That would not be great. Oh. Mo, what are you doing over here? I was working on his 3D rendering. He's trying to work his way up to having a new job. Can't, can't handle this garbage anymore. Elmo and Cyrano are killing this weather report. This is what Mo's doing. Uh, hey. Hey. This is so trippy. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of trippy. It's not really that trippy. You know, I, I think I could do this. I could write up my lyrics on slides and kind of performatively project them. Not the psychedelic liquid light stuff, necessarily. So, where do you get your supplies, Elmo? Well, Ben has a guy in... Oh, oh wait, you mean like the projection stuff? Well, I mail-ordered these candle dyes. And this other stuff is just mineral oil, like you could get at the drugstore. The projector... Uh, somebody just left it here, man. It's incredible. Actually, it was that girl who does the pirate video stuff? You know, jamming our signal? Oh, Weaver. Yeah, yeah, our resident ghost. Oh. Ghost, huh? You really think she's dead? Ah, does it matter? Yes. I think probably there are a bunch of people to whom it matters. You can't leave a ghost behind until you die, right? Well, that's, that's one way to do it. But have you ever missed someone so bad you felt like they were haunting you? Or, or been in a relationship with someone where it feels like their ex-lover is always in the room? Yeah, I see what you mean. Hey, you think she'll get us tonight? I mean, it's about time, right? He's right. We're about due. Plus, Saturn's in retrograde. Yeah, so I hear. Not that she keeps a strict schedule, but it's never longer than a month or two between... Uh, what does Mimi call them? Well, I know they're bad for the general vibe around here, but can I be honest? Emily nods in mock gravity. I kind of like it when she busts in and takes over our signal. It's like a log falling on the road. Reminds you that this all used to be trees. Interventions, that's what Mimi calls it. Hey, how does she, how does she do it? Well, her performances were cool, though. Yeah, I never saw her, um, perform. I heard about it. Oh, yeah, I saw her do it a few times. I was into it. You know, for a while we thought she had a tower somewhere, but she's even jamming the local cable transmissions. She did lectures, right? Yeah, you could say that. I thought of them as, like, storytelling sessions? She talked for hours and shuffled through slide after slide of shapes, numbers, weird constellations, and who knows what any of it meant. Ralph and Sherry went and checked every cable in town for, um, oh, what, what, what would they call it? And this was her projector? Right. I don't know where she got it, though. It still works really well. I got a spare bulb at a resale shop, but I haven't had to use it yet. Uh, taps or, or splices. Injection sites? You know, places where Weaver would be overriding our signal. They didn't find anything. It's a mystery. That's why it bothers people so much. But to me, that just makes it more, like, dignified, somehow. So what happened to the rest of her stuff? Oh, I, I bet her slides are still here in this studio. Maybe with the posters? Sherry has all Weaver's old notebooks, I know that. She keeps them in her archive, you know, the, the big blue filing cabinet? With the daisies painted on it. Yeah. Anyway, the, the really hard part to find is these two pieces of glass. They have to be paired very precisely. I had to get these from the clock store over in Glasgow. That's where they come from, you know, clock faces. Oh, thanks for the tips, dude. Anytime, dude. Huh. 
Yeah, I sort of just like it completely spaced on the fact that the way people see Weaver, uh, aside from Conway, the way people see Weaver is in broadcasts. It's when they... It should have been obvious, I feel like, when they were talking about ghosts. There's really only the one ghost that we keep hearing about, right? We going back to Rita? Yeah, I guess we're throwing back to Rita. It is interesting, though, huh? Thanks, Elmo and Cyrano. So, next we have a selection from the video data bank. You're gonna like this one, Maya. This one's about caves. Ooh. Yeah, local caves. We play this one a lot. It's pretty cool. And the telephone rings. Oh, but we have a phone call. Should we get it now, or should we wait? Ah, we'll get it now, okay. Yeah, that is how phones work. Rita presses a button on the telephone next to her. Hello, WEVP? you all packed a lunch. Sounds like this is going to be a long one. There's something going on here that I think is really interesting. The parts that actually have voice acting often don't exactly match the, the text that we're given. And to some extent, you know, it's just like they're, they're cutting out some like ums and noises and that's whatever. But sometimes the actual words are a little bit different. Like he didn't actually say you can probably hear me. He got partway through it and then cut it off and just said, hey Maya, hey Ron. And it would be no problem at all to just go back, like, even if this was the script that the voice actor originally read from, it would be no problem at all to go back and rewrite this so it matches the audible speech a little bit more closely before putting it into the game. I, I just think it's really curious that the speech and the text don't exactly line up, because that's a decision that you make, and I'm not exactly sure what is being communicated by it. They should be okay if I wander around a bit. That's a super cute name for a raccoon.
my god, he's still going. At some point, this audio is gonna run out, right? Shit, the line's dead. Uh, the phone lines are such a mess up here. Um, hello? Was that the storm? Or was it the damn phone lines? Man, they're really flaky. Ugh, business as usual. You know, he has a really soothing voice. Oh, that's Jeff. He's a regular caller. Oh, he's asleep. Hmm? Maya indicates Ron, who has fallen asleep in his chair. Oh, well, let him sleep. Ah, the magic of public uh, public access broadcasts. Okay, well, let's play the tape. This is Cave Art. It's a classic around here. I'm excited. Ah, oh, looks like Mo's got this one all queued up. Way to go, Mo. I should... I should let Maya enjoy the tape. She seems excited about it. So, if Weaver is a ghost by some agreed-upon definition and mechanics, that means WEVP-TV is haunted. Should we be doing something about that? I mean, are you supposed to, like, have an exorcism or something? I mean, you can't just leave a place haunted. That would be negligence. I'd miss her, though. I guess there are good ghosts and bad ghosts. Like spiders. Good in the garden, bad in the shower. A loud crashing noise from outside wakes Ron up. It's really more of a thud. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, what was that? I'll check it out. Yikes. Should we go help? Oh, no. He's... Oh, oh, the tape is over. Well, what did you think? Uh, that was great. Yeah, I like that one. I kind of... That sounded pretty close. Oh, no. Is the power out or, or just the lights? Yeah, I don't know. It's... I'll take a look. Maybe a fuse blew on a relay or something. Or some scared rat chewed a wire. Abandoned ship! Just, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I guess I'll take a look around and see if anything's smoking. A little town must seem even more romantic now, huh? This is weird. I guess it's up to me to figure out what's going on here. Maybe we should call... Oh no, the phones are definitely dead now. Yeah, wow, it's getting real dark. Weird that she's having the thought about. I, I guess she's having the thought about our town seeming romantic when we look at Maya because Maya is not from here. Right? It's incredible how dark it gets in here. I wonder if that weird hum in our wire still shows up when the power's out. Of course, I can't check because the oscilloscope isn't working. That's the thing about real mysteries. You can't even trust your instruments. It feels like feathers? Oops, <laughs> sorry, Mo. How are you holding up? I know you hate the dark. So I guess the that I mean it's a it's a hand cursor, right? So I guess it, it represents her actually feeling around. I thought we were just looking at stuff, but you know it is an eye and also a hand. I'm not even gonna think about the video data bank. No, I refuse. I refuse to think about it. It's fine, right? Surely it's fine. Yeah, as long as the water stays on the roof. You know, if the storm just wiped this town off the map, where would everyone go? Would Elmo disappear into the woods? Or maybe go down to the Echo River and ply his trade there? They have weather down there, right? I accidentally clicked. Oh. Oh, poor thing. She's soaked. She's... Wait, who's this? Are you having trouble with... Oh, I spoke too soon. I thought your power was out. Yeah, it just came back on. Weird. Good, though. Everybody else thought that might be Weaver, right? Am I, am I the only person? <laughs> oh, and, and hey, you made it. In this storm, I... 
Oh, I'd never miss the evening broadcast. To be honest, it's the only time I get to share my work. I wonder how many people even tune in at this point. I mean, is she just reading her poetry to us here in the studio? Oh, sure, of course. Uh, that's great. So, what happened with the power? That was... that was weird, right? The power? Oh, it seems like a normal kind of thing to happen in a storm. Yeah, you're right. I, I just have an eerie feeling tonight. Three times. Well, you know, Saturn's in retrograde, right? Yes, it sure is. Well, ready to go? Ready. Some of the studio wiring is in puddles right now. That's dangerous, right? It feels like it might be dangerous. Nobody else seems concerned about it. Okay, I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see that. It's a good strategy for dealing with problems in life. Uh, the ceiling is falling apart. It doesn't bode well for the roof. Or maybe the other way around, you know. Okay, you guys are just having fun playing with your Firefox logo. I guess let's get back to it. Now we enter the cultural section of tonight's program. To the out-of-towner. Did you fix it? It just came back on its own. It'll just take a second for the equipment to warm back up and we'll be back on the air again. It's spooky. It's a disaster out there. The neighbor's barn is basically underwater. Wow, so just completely... Yeah, just completely flooded. I passed Rom on the way in. He's gonna take a look and see if there's anything he can do. Will they be okay? Ron knows what he's doing. He used to be a firefighter. Yes, that would definitely make you qualified for this. It's a little bit different, though, right? I guess. Nikki hands some wet paper towels to Rita. Oh, thanks. Nikki pulls a journal out of her jacket pocket. I brought my work. Oh, good. Nikki reads her poetry. It's a weekly feature of our broadcast. Oh, great. I, I look forward to hearing it. Yeah, I just hope that we can keep going. We lost power a little while before, right? I better get started then. To the out-of-towner. What eagle flew you to your final bed? It was not men who brought you there to sleep. The men who left you bloodied then and fled had chosen mud and muddy watered creek. I do not know how to find, like, the meter in a line of poetry to know how to accent it or anything, so apologies. To those of you who like poetry and who are frustrated by me. Did wild turkeys gobble, dote, and care, and wipe the moss beneath your eyelids clear? Did cardinals pull the twigs out from your hair, and wash your hands and feet, and trim your beard? When wood ducks dressed you in your resting gown, and pigeons fashioned shoes from leaves and bark, who then sewed flowers into a, bur a burial ground? The one who made your headdress was a hawk. That's not as good of a ride as the other ones. The men who broke your body, where were they? The vultures stayed home on your funeral day. Emily, look at the monitor! Dude, be quiet! We're live right now! What's wrong with you? No, we're not! Look! Okay, that seems bad. Yeah, that's not our broadcast. Damn. There she is. Elmo was right. What's wrong? It's her. Weaver. Also, a shaking of the camera that makes me a little nervous. Oh, really? Tonight? Sorry about this, Maya. What's what's going on? A local prankster. She jams our signal every once in a while. Whenever the stars align. Prankster. Not the word I would use. Damn, so what do you do about it? I'm just wait until she's done. We've never been able to stop her from jamming us. We don't even know how she does it. We should be back on in a minute, though. Don't worry. It's definitely creepy. Would I be as creeped out by it if the word ghost had not been used a bunch of times? I wonder. Well, that sounds bad. if I have control anymore or not.
okay, no, I don't. That was the end of the thing. Right, because, like, I wasn't super creeped out by Weaver the first time we saw her, when she was definitely a ghost, but I didn't know she was a ghost. So if I didn't know she was a ghost there, it's just, like, a weird broadcast thing, right? Although, I guess pirate broadcasts are always kind of creepy. There's, like, a, a disruption of normalcy there. I don't know, if you've ever watched, like, that famous Max Headroom broadcast interruption or something, there's definitely something unnerving about it. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. That's probably going to be it for us for today. Obviously, I'm not going to start Act 5 50 minutes into an episode. So thank you all so much for watching. I, I keep saying it. I probably should stop saying it. Or at least I should probably stop talking about how I need to stop saying it. But I find this very compelling. It's a very strange thing. And it's like all the way deep in, deep in my skull. Not just the thinky parts, but also the bony parts. Come back next time, tomorrow, for the beginning of the final act. We'll see you then.